Hi, I'm Jason Gorber from ThatShelf.com, and we're here to talk about the 50th anniversary of Jesus Christ Superstar. Big change. So those of you that know me, those of you that don't, are probably really familiar. I'm a huge fan of Jesus Christ Superstar. This all happened basically in high school when I started listening to the recording pretty incessantly. Um, back then there was really two recordings. There's two main things to fall in love with. There was either the original, the so-called Brown album, um, as it was released in North America, and the film soundtrack. So we're going to be talking about the original concept album, recorded in 1970 or 71. And what this was, was Edward Weber and Tim Rice had had some success writing a children's musical called Joseph the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And they tried to get a, um, a full-on musical about the life of Jesus Christ uh, um, put on stage. And they were unable to get full funding for it. But what they did get was the ability to record an album, a concept album. Now, this was by no means the first concept album, but it was certainly one of the most successful of all time. This was in the era where things like Tommy and... Um, uh, some of the albums from Mother's Invention, um, even to a certain extent, I mean, Sgt. Pepper, Long and Heart Club Band is a complicated example, but there was certainly the full-on concept album, the rock opera, as it were, um, uh, that told the story, technically rock operetta, uh, told the story entirely through, um, um, through lyrics and the use of rock music. Um, I think uh, Village Green um, by the Kinks, uh, there's, there's a number of these recordings that came out in this era. So it was not unheard of to release a record that told a full story that all the songs formed a kind of suite. What was relatively unique at the time is that this was done as a way to actually bring a show to stage. Um, I think it's fair to say that this w album was much more wildly successful that anybody could have anticipated. Here we are five decades later and the show is still touring. Um, but nonetheless, um, the story of Jesus Christ Superstar um, in itself is kind of uh, remarkable. Um, you have in the original cast a series of rock musicians um, some of whom hadn't quite had the hits that they were uh, about to have. Ian Gillen, who was the um, uh, original Jesus on this version uh, was the lead singer of Deep Purple and actually would have um, significant success after this. The Grease Band, which was the backing band of uh, Joe Cocker, formed um, the primary uh, instrumental uh, sort of core rhythm section of this. And um, if, you, if you start listening to some of the stuff that they did with Joe Cocker, um, uh, the Leon Russell-y stuff, um, uh, it's extraordinary. There's incredible musicianship on here. Um, you have the uh, Trinidadian backup singers, Murray Head, who would go on to be um, a major, had a major your hit actually from with a song from Chess, um, the uh, uh, one night in Bangkok, um, a decade and a bit later, one and a half decades later, um, thanks to his uh, role in the the musical written in part by uh, the two guys from ABBA. Yvonne Elliman, who had come from um, uh, the original Broadway show, I think that she was an understudy who eventually became the lead Mary. Um, Barry Denon, original Broadway and original UK, if I'm not mistaken. Mike Dabo from um, uh, Manfred Mann, um, uh, playing King Herod. Caiaphas, uh, Victor Brox, uh, Johnny Gustafson as Simon, uh, Peter as Paul Davis. Um, and uh, sort of, you had here basically as Caucasian as the cast ever got. And yet, nonetheless, there's some incredible stuff going on here. My love, my the, what I fell in love with was the movie version and the Ted Neely, Carl Anderson sort of duo um, really for me is what everything is judged for or against. Things are a little bit better, a little bit worse, but those guys are the absolute apotheosis. But Ian Gillen here is just unbelievable his voice is fantastic and murray had though he lacks honestly the gospel prowess of what judas the role judas really demands he nonetheless does a very very good job he probably would have made a better jesus than he would have been judas in terms of how the song is actually written although i'm not sure he could have gotten that um uh, amazing rock falsetto that uh that uh the role demands hello john legend um so again, this was the version that most people knew. Certainly I had it on CD. But the, the Brown album version, this is the one that comes with a libretto. This is an original pressing. And it comes with a nice little book. Inside the book you have all the lyrics on this sort of snot-colored uh, yellow parchment. Everything going on. Um, it was a nice box set that many, many, many people had. 
and the actual records have the famous uh, superstar uh, Angel logo. In the UK, however, um, the, the record actually came out in this much more gaudy, but kind of interesting cover. Um, the font, if that doesn't say late 60s, early 70s, I don't know what will. But this being a first UK pressing actually has a unique construction. It sort of unfolds with this shiny stuff on the inside. It forms this kind of cross-like thing. Inside we have the records on the MCA UK. Just get it so you can see that sort of weird swirly uh, image. The original sleeves, because I have it in MoFi, are these old school brand, uh, bragging that it's stereo inners, but you can see it's a plastic inner with paper on the outside. So still not, not bad. That's why the records are in reasonably good shape. And the inside you have this wild image, different, different images of Jesus told from the very simplistic and childish to um, uh, sort of oil paintings. And, all that. and that's, that's how it was originally structured. Um, this version is actually worth a little bit of money now. Um, it was the, the first and limited edition of that. Um, and uh, I'm happy to have it in my collection. The recordings always were, were okay. Um, the mastering was decent. Actually, much, much better than the movie version. The movie version is in desperate need of uh, a complete remix. It would be unbelievable for somebody to actually go to the master tape and completely uh, do a good job because the, the, the mix is not a very musical mix. It was obviously in the film version they're, they're emphasizing the, the, the vocals as dialogue, um, but it sounds very thin and uh, mono, especially as my system gets better, I realize how much worse it sounds than it should. Um, the Andre Previn Orchestra, all that stuff. But again, that's for another conversation. But what we have now here in the late autumn, um, late summer, uh, they released um, uh, box sets um, available, some of which were exclusively on the uh, Universal Music Group website. I had to order them from the States. They would not deliver to Canada. And so I ordered a shipment. It took many, many days and weeks. And then when the shipment came to uh, uh, my the residence in New York that I was sending it to, disappeared, gone. Whoever left them there either left them outside or delivered the wrong address. And I have spent months trying to get these records back. Months and months and months and months. They finally were meant to be delivered the day before the person was coming from New York. So I was going to have them, whatever. It's all a whole schlamazel, as we say. Uh, but nonetheless, I have finally, finally... A box from UPS um, with, with these records. This has been uh, wrapped... Um, by the person who was supposed to send it to me, so I want to open this up and see what we have inside. Okay, all lovingly packed inside. I have two copies. One's obviously not for me, but two copies of the limited edition. We'll open that up in a sec. And also beautifully packed. The box set. So let's start with the box set. Um, the album will launch a phenomenon. Jesus Christ Superstar, original 1970 recording. What's 1970? I could never remember. Because the 50th anniversary, welcome to COVID, we lose a year. Um, Remastered Abbey Road contains a 100-page book with new interviews from Andrew Lloyd Webber, Tim Rice, Nile Rogers, Nile Rogers. God bless. Uh, Ian Gillen, Matt Berry, <laughs> of course, Ivan Elliman, plus a disc of rarities. So this is basically the first two um, CDs, right? It was always a two CD set and CD three, which has, um, some, uh, um, some, uh, not B sides, but some stuff that has never been released before, which is fantastic. I, this has been on Spotify and streaming other streaming services, uh, since it was released and I've been avoiding cause I want to listen to it this way. Cause I'm a crazy person. Um, we got guide vocals on here. Um, Herod song, uh, blood money. I don't know how to love him. Tim Rice and Murray head doing the vocal. That'll be pretty wild. Um, uh, some, some, um, Pretty crazy stuff in here. A bunch of interviews. Oh, the open-ended interview with the Crazy Jesus Christ Superstar. So it'll be like one of those interviews that they do for radio stations where they're like, uh, the answers are sort of pre-recorded. So kind of interesting, but again, a really, really uh, nice set so far. Let me carefully open this up and see what the book looks like inside. 
Now, as per usual, the, all of these extras are only available on the digital version. So, yeah, welcome to my life of needing to have both. So inside, this is kind of nice, because inside the Brown album, you have the start, what do we want to call this? The sort of mush album? <laughs> Regardless, uh, there's, there's the, without the font, uh, that sort of original uh, type logo. Inside, two CDs here. And in the back, I'm guessing the bonus CD. And then we have here, yeah, the original script elements, artwork, different elements, different posters. I'm really looking forward to diving into this. So yeah, it definitely looks like a really, really nice set. Basically, there's one CD in here I'm gonna listen to and read the book. Uh, the rest of it is bonus, but it's nice to have as somebody who still collects the CDs because it's just a great superstar. Then we have the record version, which as you can see, has the same kind of fold as the original. The album that launched the phenomenon, Jesus Christ Superstar, original 1970 recording, half speed mastered to Abbey Road on 180 gram vinyl, strictly limited replica fold out edition. They haven't said how limited, it's not numbered, uh, but nonetheless, there is uh, the version. Now, it has a barcode that it obviously never had uh, back in the day, but um, here we have, and I'm gonna try to carefully open this and not ruin it. See if I can do it this way. I really need to get a better knife for this. Okay. Open this up without ruining the sticker because I'm a silly person. And open this up without crushing it further. Hard. Yeah. I'm just gonna rip the plastic, it's come to that. So inside, it actually weirdly feels a bit more flimsy. The card itself is less uh, sort of sturdy, but the printing is a lot nicer. So if I open it up on the inside here, carefully, uh, we have that sort of shiny material. This looks familiar, doesn't it? Inside, with the shininess, and inside I have the same print with all the Jesus Jesus's on the inside of this sort of larger thing as a structured, which is quite nice. And the albums themselves, polyline sleeves, but you can see that the logo very different than the first pressing, but nonetheless, yeah, JCS, a rock opera. So the records themselves, I'm hoping, Look pretty darn good. I mean, they certainly are flat. I don't see any obvious uh, issues with them. So finally, finally, finally have these in my hands. Two record set, of course. And what else we got? We have a sort of poster version that I can frame, I guess. And one of those record frames of the Faces of Jesus. Again, I'm probably too Jewish to do that. Uh, and then this is nice, uh, although it's a little bit uh, um, schmust. This is the um, uh, uh, the original libretto sheet. So you can see here. So this is looks like a repro of the thing that was in some of the other Brown albums. I've seen sort of larger versions like this. But yeah, there we go. Um, um, with all the other elements. Um, let me actually dig into this because this is actually interesting. Yeah, the musicians. We, we never give a shout out as much to the musicians on this. Uh, Bruce Rowland, Alan Spenner, uh, Henry McClellough, uh, Neil Hubbard, Peter Robinson, Chris Mercer. Uh, so Bruce, uh, the drummer, again from uh, Grease Band. Alan Spenner, incredible incredible bass lines on this record absolutely astonishing uh henry the uh, guitarist really fantastic uh neil the other guitarist peter robinson um 
just killing it on keyboard, just absolutely uh, brilliant. And Chris Mercer, the tenor sax player, sort of shows up and does a little bit of stuff. And then when you go, there's a bunch of additional uh, musicians, including, of course, Andrew Lloyd Webber on piano, organ, and Moog synthesizer. So God bless Andrew Lloyd Webber showing up on his own concept album playing a bunch of Moog stuff. So I can't wait to dive into and listen to this. Um, uh, thank you for taking uh, this little Juice Christ uh, superstar journey with me. Um, thanks so much for watching. For ThatShelf.com, I'm Jason Gorber. Please subscribe, follow us on social media. I'll be doing a deeper dive into this and other recordings in uh, videos to come. But let us know in the comments uh, about what you think about these, about this musical in particular, and um, uh, what else you'd like to see on the channel. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next video. All the best.